Today we're talking to someone that's built a subscription business, helping themselves to a couple of grand a month. It's in the mindfulness space around breath work and stuff. These are businesses that I think are very difficult to scale and build serious wealth. And in this situation here, we've got someone that's been building the business for two and a half years as basically paying themselves minimum wage. But I've got some good ideas. JB's got some good ideas too on how we can turn this into something that actually does make some money. Strap yourselves in. Hello, Gambus. Welcome back to Business Broadcast. Hello, JB. Hello there. Sorry if you were thinking, why is he sort of a bit stunted as he starts the conversation there? It's because off camera, James Sinclair has a little uh, anti-pasty collection he likes to bring himself. He decided he could scoff an olive in the time of that intro. No, no, no. I've got some blueberries here and some raspberries. Lovely. I can see you haven't cleaned them. Seen them. Uh, no. Let's hope they're organic. Master Spencer's, of course. Of <laughs> And then uh, what I've got here is some, some olives, uh, some cheddar cheese, uh, and uh, what are these things called? Oh, they're like corn, aren't they? No, these are maize, maize. pitted nozzarella olives, that's the olive. cheddar cheese, and salted corn. There you go. I mean, these are quite healthy snacks, aren't they? They're very healthy snacks. Yeah. Well, these are my favourite things to have. There you go. So if you were wondering, guys, if you're thinking, if you tuned in to find out, I wonder what James Sinclair loves to snack on. Now you know. Now you know. Now you know. What I don't love is... Oh, here we go. ...businesses like this where I think I can't add loads and loads of value and I'm frustrated already. Um, oh, let's let's just me and you sort of yes. batter around on subscription-based businesses. Yeah. It is the holy grail for lots of entrepreneurs. It is. You know, oh, just set a business up and people pay you each and every it's single month. It's so much harder than it looks, isn't it? Yeah. Or the, the idea... Experts would have you believe. Yes, and the philosophy is A1. Obviously it is. Um, and I've got some subscription businesses, but dressed in real businesses. So my day nursery business, I absolutely see as a subscription business. You oh, pay you? monthly okay. for the service. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've also got a direct debit membership to come to our zoos, farm parks, visitor attractions, yep. which is paid for monthly. Um, and then I have a traditional, or sorry, no, not, not a traditional, a Fandango subscription business, which is called Entrepreneurs University. £50 a month with business lessons from me, and I think it is incredible value. Yes. We've got quite a big following on the main channel, on this channel, mm. uh, big email database and lists. Yeah, and we have a few hundred people signed up to it. I think it's very difficult, though. Mm. Ask, you, don't pay, you don't play the paid ads game, though, do you? Because no, anyone I know that does play the paid ads game, the only people that are making money is Zuckerberg. Yeah. Mighty Meta and Zuckerberg's personal cash machine. Now, I had an impressive entrepreneur come to see me. I know where we get you on. Sorry, just side note. Say to me LinkedIn over lunch. LinkedIn over lunch. Um, I had an impressive entrepreneur that I know listens. He had a consultancy session with me. Uh, you keep he, saying that you do this at the moment. You're, you're in real risk of people starting cold pitching you again, Sinclair. I'm just warning you. Like the I don't last do four consultancy episodes, unless you you're really impressive and uh, I feel I can add you loads of value. Um, and you, Why do you think I'm here every fortnight, like, guys? <laughs> It's not just the jingles, is it? It's just a bonus. Um, and he's got a business called Nutriseed. I think he, he, he's doing many millions of revenue each and every single year. Nutriseed? Yeah, yeah. And people buy nuts and seeds and juices from him, yeah? Good, healthy right. stuff. Oh, nice. uh, it's got nice branding as well. Based in Reading. He's going to bring it up now, I think. Yeah, they're, they're all of those. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a really impressive guy. He's the guy that gave me the Felix Dennis book. Was he? Yeah, yeah. And I what, the first time? The one, no, no, recently he gave me a signed copy. Oh, of, okay. And a hex clad oh, frying pan. Cool. He's an amazing, and I helped him, introduce him to someone that saved him a load of money on a commercial mortgage. And so. Oh, this is great. Yeah, he's a really, and he's, he's got a subscription business around this. But again, it's based on real, yeah, people are getting drinks and foods. It's and something tangible, isn't it? Something tangible. That's what yeah. I, day nursery, something tangible, yeah. Mm. Netflix, you know, people want to watch the next Stranger Things. You know, it becomes a habit. And I, I suppose that's the answer. That's the answer, I think. Yeah. Now, even he, with this amazing products and amazing things at Nutra Seed, um, we'll, hopefully in the edit, if they can remember, we'll put a little screenshot of their business up. Um, I think people are sticking around four and a half months. That's what he said. Or maybe really? three and a half months. Uh, and he spends 40% of his turnover on ads. Getting them. 
forty percent of his turnover on ads. Oh, they do a gazpacho. I love a gazpacho. He, he, and I think, do you really want to spend forty percent on ads? It is a, it's a paid ads game, though, isn't it? That is a paid ads game. Mm. But you don't mind spending forty percent of your turnover if people are sticking around for two, three, four, five, ten years, which I have to say, Netflix have. Mm. I have to say, Sky TV have. Yeah. Day nursery, you come to my day nursery, we give you the, if we open a new day nursery, we say the second month's childcare, which is worth £1,000 plus, is free. The second month is yeah, free? Yeah, so you pay for the first month and we give you the second month oh, free. that's good. Because we know that they're going to stick around for three, four, five years. Yeah. And probably have another child and... And do the same. Yeah, exactly. Exactly the journey that me and Hayley have been yeah. on. So, so we've got huge lifetime value and we believe free is better than discounting. And, and for parents, I think, well, yeah, £1,000... Thank you very much. Yes, but low price point memberships where you're getting digital information, that's your, that's your bugbear, isn't it? Where there is no habit. Yeah. So Netflix is a habit for people. I think that's what, you know, nursery is a habit. You go there very quickly. You, you're doing it, you know, this rule of four thing that I always talk about. Yeah. You watch Stranger Things, episode one, you, you're, you're baiting baiting to get to that next episode next episode you're in and then the next level of content comes up and so netflix have created this rule of four thing day nursery you go on monday tuesday wednesday thursday habitual you know the staff da 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 online content online coaching people can put it down if Mm. they're not in the mood even some of the best apps. have you ever played around with the duolingo app the language learning app yeah oh it is the best app you have mm. ever seen in your life. It is so cleverly done. Mm. They must have had some absolute wizards putting that together. And still, I've never got more than 15 days consistently doing it. Yeah, I know some people have, like Sam in my office, who will be editing this podcast. I think he's on like day 1500. So he's learned Chinese every day for like five years or something. I think he's, but, but he's, that's a unicorn. That's, but yeah, that is unusual. So I think it's important that, you know, we do the right job. And I, I feel so, Sean, that's going to be listening in thinking, well, oh, this is going to be a great conversation we're about to have here. But, you know, I do think it's difficult. But it could be, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do think it's difficult. And, and what happens is the marketplace serves you up the unicorns that do well at it. Yeah. And so you think, yes, well, yes, I can yes. do the same. But they're the unicorns. They're not the rule. Mm-hmm. They're the unicorns. Yeah. There is, uh, uh, in fact, on my newsletter that I wrote this week, I, you know, I wrote about these type of people, the crypto millionaires that we've seen on Instagram that overnight have made uncopious amounts of yeah. wealth by putting just £50 into Bitcoin. Yeah. But they are the rare ones. They are not... The regular. They're not the majority. And and the people that have, you know, learned to play the piano in seven days by just using this app, they're rare. Mm. Well, let's go through his challenges, shall we? Yeah. Before we poo-poo it too much further. Well, because I'm not poo-pooing. No, I know you're not poo-pooing. I, I don't, you, don't you, don't, you don't like the model of this sort of business, do you? Because of your methodologies. Um, so he says, the biggest challenge, the biggest challenge, the biggest challenge is creating an urgency around sales. Everyone I speak to loves the business at some point in the future or for someone else. Most of the growth has come via word of mouth to date. So the biggest urgency is getting people to actually start using it. And we had a pre-chat chat with Sean a minute ago and he said, like, one of the easiest things is onboarding businesses. But what? But then one well, of the challenging things is getting them to use it. So obviously onboarding them in terms of actually getting them logistically set up, that's the easy bit, but getting them to but not giving to, you any money. Yes. Just so getting them to create a username but not don't buy anything from yes, us. Yes, potentially. Yeah. Second biggest challenge, getting the five five five. So the company's called the five 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 club, by the way. You can check it out, the five 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 club dot co dot UK. Getting the five 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 name or my name out there, showing the business and the power of uh, showing the businesses the power of employees who can take these tools and allow them to switch off in the evenings and at weekends, which means they are rested, which means they are more productive at work, which means they are happier at work. You get the idea. Just so we have been clear on this, this is a um, according to the website, improve focus, calm and concentration. It's a mental health toolbox, is what they call it. It's fifteen minutes of calm and clarity through breath work, meditation, and gratitude. So it's like journaling, breath work, and meditation rolled into one rolled out at over 
a hundred live calls monthly. They have Monday to Friday. There's one, two, three, four, five calls every single day. Oh yeah, sorry, five calls a day, five days a week, and there's no cap on usage. You can turn up for a live session up to a hundred times per month. So he's trying to create that that habit thing that we we're talking about a minute ago. Clearly, um, so the second uh, second biggest challenge. Can I just say? I just there. want to dive in here. You know the phrase: um, "Tell them what they want, give them what they need." Yeah, I think. People do need this stuff. Yes. Like you, you, we on the podcast sort of three episodes ago, you were talking about the Miracle Morning. And yeah, the, yeah. That savers. Yes, yes, Probably yes. The first one was silence, wasn't it? Silence. Affirmations. Affirmations. Visualization. Have you been doing it? Well, I think anyone good does do it, but accidentally. Not, yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Um. So uh, exercise was exercise, something. reading, and scribing, which yeah. is like journaling. Yeah. I think all good people do do that. To some level, but probably not in a succinct. Consi- yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. And I think a lot of people do need that. Yeah, stuff, but they don't necessarily want to do it. No, that's true. Especially if we're going after corporate, especially exercise, and then like. corporate is like, here's this thing for you. You should use it. Are you really going to use it? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe we can talk to Sean about that in a minute. Um, third biggest challenge, I have a view on what the 555 Club could be, but other than slow but steady growth over the last two plus years, I'm not sure how to take it where it can go. I am paid in relation to the people I help. I just need to help more people. Where does he want this business to be in one year? He wants to be showing growth and movement in the right direction. My operating costs are super low. He's using school as in the platform that Alex or Mosey co-owns. He's using Zoom. He's using Typeform and Home Broadband. So there's next to no cost. Uh, and he's much more concerned with what the business and I are going to be coming uh, versus what I'll be earning in 12 months. That being said, I would like to get out of my 16-year-old car, but not until I can afford it with no interest. Uh, I've got no interest in just looking successful. What does the business look like when it's finished? Okay, hyphen. Live 555 calls happening all over the world. Employees and licensees in America across different time zones. Employees and licensees in different languages and able to handle any size of organisation from one to 10,000 staff. Currently, we can handle up to 200-ish staff. Do you make the profit that you want to make? We always ask people these important questions and he says, no, to be honest, anything above five grand a month and I'm on the pig's back. But then there comes the element of what could this become? And who aren't you helping by playing small? Well, I'm on the pig's back. Have you ever heard that as a turn of phrase? Anything more than the... (laughs) Anything... Oh, okay. Like a pig in, what's it? So if you're over 5K, on the pig's back is probably like, you're happy. Oh, right. I think that's what he's saying there. Wow, there you go. Like a pig in soft, smelly stuff. Yeah. Um, When I started this, I told myself that I wanted 20K per month was the target. And as I was offered that as a starting salary... What do you do day to day in the business? Oh, he holds the five 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 calls. He does outbound to organisations. He does one to one hypnotherapy coaching calls, um, and think of burning the boats on this and going all in. Oh, he's thinking of burning the boats on the uh, hypnotherapy calls, and then he's got a bunch of questions that he would like to ask to you as well. But before that, it's time for. Um, James C. Clare's favourite new bit of the show, and hopefully by the time this comes out, we will know, we'll have the feedback. We would have beta tested this. Do you guys love Quote or Fact of the Week? Hopefully you do, because here it comes again. Interesting Quote or Fact. Interesting Quote or Fact. Interesting Quote or Fact. It's time for the Interesting Quote or Fact of the Week. It's time for Interesting Quote or Fact of the Week. Ka. What do you got, fact or quote? I've got a fact. Go on then. Because we're talking it. about breath holding, meditation, breath work, gratitude. I'm going to ask you a question. How long do you think is the world record holding breath hold? Four minutes. Four minutes? I can do four minutes. You're mad, aren't you? Four minutes. Okay, fine. Chuds ain't even listening. Longest ever breath hold. Record breaking breath hold. How long? 15 minutes. 15 minutes, he says. 15 minutes. Sinclair's gone in at four. Chuds has got it at 15. There's no one else here to ask and I can't answer it because I've already looked at the answer. The answer is... Chuds is the winner, by the way. 24 minutes. Are you clinically dead at that point? 24 minutes and 37 seconds. Professional breath hold diver Budmir Shubat uh, holds the world record for 24 minutes and 37 seconds. Do you reckon he was doing that? But underneath his breath, he was going to go. What? As long as my nostrils don't flare, they can't tell what, me. What has that got to do with business and entrepreneurship? We're talking about breath holding. I mean... <laughs> We ever become a broad 
The interesting fact or quote of the week has to have something to do with personal development, business and entrepreneurship, in my opinion. What's the, what's the business today, Sinclair? Breath work. What are we talking about? Breath holding. Exactly. Shut your mouth. During the breath hold, the level of CO2 rises and the O2 declines. The initial increase is the urge to breathe after, let's say, 30 seconds will actually subside because of the CO2 level. So there you go. The it seems breath- like this podcast is now taking on QI. <laughs> <laughs> 24 minutes. There you go. What's the longest you've ever held your breath for? Oh, well, I've not actually mentioned it or no. Oh, you should do it. You will when you start getting into your miracle morning if you do a bit of Wim Hof breathing as well. Wim Hof breathing. Tell you what, it's, ma- it's magical breath. I can see the value of breath work, to be fair. I've got a quote for you then. Go on then. Better if, be very busy because that wasn't. Well, it's a personal development quote and I like this one. If you really want to do something, you'll find a way. If you don't, you'll find an excuse. Bring it back to the regular theme of this podcast. Very nice. What do you think to that? I like it. You can either find it. Should I say, say, say it one more time? I'm going to read it one more time. Oh, please do. Would you like some? Um, if you really want to. Oh, you, we'll no, 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 you crack on. I just crack on. If you really want to do something, you'll find a way. If you don't, you'll find an excuse. I love that. I think it's beautiful. And um, I think it's very true. A more succinct way of saying that. Excusitis is becoming a, a thing that is just everywhere at yeah. the moment. Like, why people can't do anything i mean uh, everyone's got everything so good we're becoming so lazy as human beings mm. because convenience is infecting us doesn't your wife according to your letter didn't she call you mr, mr. convenience so yeah, how but, do you no 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 so but, that's in life I get yeah that. yeah but i don't like queuing right. i don't like waiting i don't like traffic jams i don't right. like security at airports especially security at airports yeah those things really irritate me and i just can't do them i yeah. do, I, I i physically cannot Waste what happens time. if you get in a traffic jam? Do you just go mad? Well, I like me for podcasts that oh, have helped now. Yes. But that's the thing. I won't just sit there and listen to bloody music. I'll think, right, I'm wasting time here. I'm going to feed my brain with yeah. greatness. Um, but I do think most people just so just lazy now. Yeah. And that, that is a real opportunity for entrepreneurs and business owners. Uh, Charles told me about a guy called Chris Williamson, I think, who we're going to see. We are. And he was talking about that, you know, the, that there is a huge opportunity now because everyone is so lazy mm. and no one wants to do anything. No, it's true. That you have a real competitive advantage. If you just put in just a few more percentage points effort, yeah, the rewards are much better. What's interesting as well with that point you just made there, you can either find an excuse or you can find a way. You cannot do both at the same time. It's one or the other. You're either going to do the thing or you're not going to do the thing. Mm, Don't kid mm, yourself. Mm, it's either an excuse or a way. And that's why, gang, that's why you must work harder on yourself than you do your business. Yes. Because the better you become, the better you're able to cope. Do you still do that? Do you, do you work harder on you than the business? Well, I think listening to this podcast is working on you, isn't it? Yeah, you're yeah gonna, definitely. You know, you're going to yeah. pick up some stuff, um, being around brilliant people going to seminars reading books would you proactively yeah like, i think time for yeah i think exercise is one of the things that i see very important yeah. now that's reading? working still yeah, yeah yeah reading a lot i'd listen to more than i read okay um what i do could read you, every day but mainly business news what could you do more of to improve your overall life what's the thing that you're finding that excuse what's the what's excuse items have you got I mean, I'm an action taker, but even sometimes I think everyone is guilty of putting stuff off the awkward stuff in life. No, what was the last thing? Like the eat the frog thing. What have you put off that you don't want to do? Just deal with something that is annoying and I think, oh, I'll do that tomorrow. And you should do, be doing it. Is today. it because you think it's a bad use of your time? You've no, got more no, high because value I think, stuff oh, this is annoying. I don't want to do it. I don't know. Maybe it's like. Uh, renegotiating something because I think it's going to be a slightly awkward conversation. Oh, uh, okay. That sort of stuff. So you kid yourself. I'm going to be doing it in 48 it. hours, but let's just get it done to, to in this hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I'm thinking about it for two more days. And how do you do it? How do you do it in those moments where you're like, come on, you're not eating the frog. What do you, how do you, what's your sort of ritual for finding that? You're procrastinating, which is glorified. But I think off I'm getting be- you, you get better and better at it because you realise it's never as bad as you think. But yeah. I mean, nothing's really that bad. It's just like, like if you've got to let someone go, that would be a great example. Yeah. 
like lots of business owners might keep someone for six months more than they need to. Yes. And then eventually they pull the plaster off. Yeah. And that's a classic example. Yeah, yeah. Because you're a good person. Do you still do that then? Even yeah, I think yeah. so, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But you get better and better at it. Yeah. But how would you, so next time round, how would you stop you? You've had the, the thought that something needs to happen at six months. Why are you letting it dry? What would you do proactively? Because I, I think I want to see if we can turn them around because sometimes we have turned them around. Okay. Sometimes we have made people better. Yeah. You talk about him over there. No, not him. Oh, Chuds. Chuds yeah, is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but there you go. That was your fact or quote of the week. Oh, I ain't got time for this. Listen, we'll, no. we'll, it's too long, that jingle. Right, shall we get Sean on? Who's and from help? Ireland? Who is from Ireland? I think we should. He's, and he's got a strong Irish accent. Um, shall we get him on the pod? Let's get him on. Hey, gang, James here. Great news. Business Masterclass is coming back to London. This is my ultimate two-day event that will grow the profitability and size of your business so that you can have a commercially profitable enterprise that works without you in it. I've run this event before. People absolutely love it. We get rave reviews and I'd love for you to come along. Imagine 400 business owners in a room serious about growing their business. Imagine the connections you can make. I'll be on stage teaching you all the stuff that I've learned over the last 20 years in two days to seriously, seriously scale your business up. If you want to find out how to buy companies, raise finance, get customers, and make your teams as profitable as possible, then this is the event for you. Look, it comes with my 100% money back guarantee. You come along to this event, and if at the end of day one, you go, do you know what? I haven't got 10 times value out of what I've paid for this. I'll just give you your money back. And here's the great news. Tickets are only a few hundred quid. And there's no sleazy sales on the day. It's just me delivering all the stuff that I know about growing businesses. And I can't wait to meet you. I'll be there. We'll have a little chat with the other 400 people in the room. It's a big enough, but intimate enough to really learn the stuff that I know that scales businesses. Cannot wait to see you at Business Masterclass. Now, every year, the tickets go like hotcakes. So make sure you get your ticket now. The tickets are £299 as we're making this video, but they grow in value depending on how late you leave it. So get your tickets now before the price goes up. And I'll see you at Business Mars Class to grow your business. Sean, hello. Good to have you with us. Um, obviously, you've been listening in the wings, waiting in the wings and listening to the conversations. But just to make sure that we have covered it correctly-ish, can you give us a summary of the 555 Club and tell us how it became to be and tell us where you're at on the, on the journey of entrepreneurship, please, mate? Uh, yes, I certainly can. Good to be here. Uh, it came about almost as an accident. It was a free offering on Instagram that turned into charity work. Uh, a lady reached out to me asking would I come and do in-person stuff, which turned into more in-person stuff, which turned into more in-person stuff, and then I could only be so many places at once. It then turned into a uh, three days a week offering, but there was people requesting more, and I thought you either do this or you don't. And about two years ago, it went five days a week, and it's been, yeah, it's been going since. And, wh and where is the business at the moment? Where does it stand in terms of like revenue and all that kind of stuff? And ha and how uh, who are your client base at the moment? How are you getting them, et cetera? Revenue at the minute is so recurring, I would say is about £1,800 uh, monthly. Client base largest cohort would be coaches in terms of revenue chunk. Uh, then ad hoc businesses, I think there's three on annually. And then there is currently 76 individual paying members. Uh, and that ranges in price. There was a founders member at 12 quid and it raises, it's now 20 quid. So that's split between those two. And there's a handful on annual memberships of individuals. But yeah, split between those three. That's where it's at. And the biggest chunk of revenue you said was coming from coaches. So explain that so other coaches can give access to their clients to your breathwork part of sort of their program sort of thing. Correct. So take, for example, you're a PT, uh, you pay me 150 quid a month and all your clients get access through you uh, as a bolt on offering to your offering. Okay, cool. Um, having done a little bit of digging, I say done a little bit of digging, doing a little bit of digging right now on your LinkedIn page, I see construction management, I see some sales stuff, I see some financial advisory. How did the breath work come to be in your world of influence in the first place and hypnotherapy and all the other stuff that you do? Yeah, so 13 years ago this month, I was a site engineer in London. 
came home on a holiday, was diagnosed with cancer, uh, was told it was a super positive diagnosis. Long story short, it wasn't. Uh, 2013 was told I was out of here. Uh, spoiler alert, I'm still here. And then basically started looking at my own, you know, how can I take control of this from diet, from mindset, from what am I putting into my body, my mind. And that was a turning point in my journey. And these were tools that I picked up along the way as uh, you mentioned Wim Hof in the, in the, in the earlier part, mm. it was a real turning point in my blood work journey was discovering Wim Hof cold exposure and then meditation, gratitude, all these things started bundling together. I trained my first job back was as a financial advisor, but two years into that, I thought, did you really come through what you came through to do this? And then decided to, you know what, I'm going to give what I'm doing a crack. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I'm not, I'm not stressed over it, but I enjoy what I'm doing. I enjoy the feedback I get and I enjoy seeing how it's impacting others. So, and then explain to us what the offering actually is. It's a, it's an on-demand three, um, sorry, five on-demand sessions, five days a week. Just like give us the sort of the, the, the upsell of it. Like what do the people get for the money? So you pay me, you have access to five live calls a day, two in the morning, one in the middle of the day, two in the evening. And that's Monday to Friday. They're at set times. Uh, busiest calls in the morning, uh, busier calls in the evening as a few from America kick on. And then through the school app, there is a host of on-demand material from meditation course. There is hypnotic visualizations. There is just standard breath work. Basically all the stuff I do live on demand. And why would you, what's the benefit of doing it live as opposed to on demand? Uh, purely what James talked about earlier, habit. There are people don't miss a don't miss a, it's part of their morning what they do either before work or before they leave the house and then there's also a community feel to it it's a pretty cool experience if you can see 16 17 people even five people on a call and you know you're doing the same stuff you see heads writing for a few minutes of gratitude um, as corny as it sounds it's, it's pretty powerful so within that 15 minute because they're 15 minute sessions you're doing breath work and the gratitude journaling and like the visualization all in one five, five, five minutes of breath work to begin leading into five minutes of meditation and the whole point of the meditation is um really to make people realize that you know you're not the thoughts you're thinking 99 percent of stress is just people thinking about thoughts if you can create that distance between there you bring some control back in and once you've got control you can actually direct where you want to put your focus and then the final five minutes is gratitude journaling to go to journal scribble for a few minutes i am grateful for you're not trying to paper over the cracks. You're just simply trying to look at what's good as even when life's at its shittest, there's usually something you can focus on and what you focus on grows. So how old were you when you got a cancer diagnosis? Uh, I was two weeks into being 24. Bloody hell. And you're all clear now? As far as I'm aware. Wow. I've so never, like I'm, tra I'm training weekly. I'm doing around my first 5K and... 13 years last week, nearly died, but that's neither here nor there. But I'm physically better than I have been in a very, very long time. And what? all of this stuff, this sort of like the protocol that you put around yourself in terms of the cold therapy, the meditation, gratitude, all that stuff, you just sort of self-discovered that while you were trying to heal once you got yes. the cancer diagnosis. Uh, no, much, 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 much later. I was actually medically all clear, but I, my platelets were in my boots. I could, I wasn't allowed to get in a plane because if I like bang my nose, I would bleed out. Um, I couldn't, there was loads of stuff I couldn't do. And then, uh, through discovering Wim Hof and breath work and it was very, like, none of this is instant and none of this is guaranteed. Like it was just things I did that helped me post. Post the uh, stem cell transplant, I have a, what's called graft versus host disease. So that is where my donor's cells attack my cells and it creates a rash. So that can be quite sore. And then I discovered after Wim Hof that the soreness of the rash went away. And that came about because about three weeks after it, I thought, you know what, I'm going to treat myself to a warm shower. Took a warm shower, my skin hurt. It's like, okay, there's a cause and effect here. Any of this stuff, I would view it as like people... I was on a podcast before and this is like breathwork cured Sean's cancer. It's like, no, Jesus Christ, it did not. It's like, all of this is a recipe. It's like nobody, you don't eat a cake and say the egg is amazing, but take the egg out and you'll notice it. Like all these tools are just tools in the, in, in the cake of that is your life. Okay. Interesting. Right. So one of the things you mentioned is that you're hosting this on the school platform. Um, and for those that don't know, school is basically, 
uh, like a, a hub for holding online communities effectively uh, and or information. So you might have previously heard of um, Thinkific or Kajabi or you know platforms like that. And school is basically trying to take their lunch and create the go-to place for people to build and grow communities. So it's not just information that's left there, it's information plus community put into one place. There's also Sam Ovens, who's the very famous like sales guy from New Zealand, who is the co-owner of it. Um, with Hormozy. So my question to you, uh, and for those who know, like school is obviously because Alex Hormozy having the profile that he's got, uh, he hasn't really promoted other than his sort of big VC fund. He hasn't really promoted anything sort of smaller scale for years and years. And school is the first thing that he's invested in and is promoting and he's putting a lot of resource and time into that. And one of the things that they have got is called the school games. So they actually help people to build communities and build profitable communities that is focused on MRR, which is a monthly recurring revenue. Have you been through that process with the school games, with the 555 Club, or have you just put it there because it's a good platform to host all of this stuff? Uh, both. So through school, you get an excellent, uh, Alex runs trainings weekly and monthly on how to optimize your school landing page. And if you go to school.com forward slash the 555 club forward slash about, you'll see my school landing page. So that's all Alex's stuff from the testimonials, from the wording. And they're currently running. So there's a hundred spaces opened up for school games members. So I applied last night and they're going to do a 90 day sprint on growing your school account. But I know from doing that, they're going to open that up afterwards. They always do. It's like you get in in the, in the narrow end and then they open it up to everybody to run through it. But yes, I've been following their system in terms of, uh, but that, that's very, very recent. Before that, it was simply, here's a place I can put people because the, the first year, whenever you paid me, you got emailed a PDF with a link. And that, that was literally like, you've got to be on these live calls at these times. There's no on demand. I have no other way of communicating with you. And that worked for a year. And then once I had enough to monthly put into school, I, I brought that in. Gotcha. So in terms of the actual school games itself, have you been through their methodology? Because they've got a really, really good way of um, generating interest, creating awareness, increasing users, and then switching it to a paid for model. Have you actually been through the school games process yet? No. Okay. That I think for this business is going to be the game changer because there, there is school from what I have seen is the hub for this sort of stuff with daily activity that's building community that builds engagement that creates a sense of kinship and friendship this this will 100 percent. and do you say the school games are now only opened up to a certain number of people no 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 they're it's open to anyone with a school account but they've put out um yesterday the day before they're doing a like basically harmozi will mentor 100 people for 90 days uh on what he would do if he was in your shoes so you dial on a call i imagine once a week and he says what are you doing and then you go and do it but it, you then become a case study for school obviously the whole thing is marketing for school mm. i i think you should come hell or high water every training that he does you should be on it because i think the school is the place because I've, I've seen and i know some of the people who've run big 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 communities and they've had places before and they've had online training a lot of pts a lot of wellness stuff does really well on school um but their whole methodology and their process of generating awareness getting one of the big things is that stickability is that using it again and again and then switching it to a paid model this that is the, the school is the game changing platform for this business in my opinion so you've got to you know, yeah by hook or by even, get. even their payments i only like a month ago moved over to school payments and it's so seamless for signing somebody up like i, you know, I there's no manual on my side at all it just runs through automatically it's, it's pretty amazing yeah it's very very good it is very good. Um, you've just got to, I, I think one of the, the difficulties that you might have, because you've already got some people up and running, just follow what they say verbatim. Just do exactly what they say. Because again, I've, I've seen, because I've run a, a community on school for, for podcast makers um, and we've got 150 odd members in, you know, like a month or something like How that. How much you make out of that? We, we're not charging at the moment. We're following their model that they've got, which is do it freemium but there's a lot of sort of consultancy stuff that's potentially come off the back of it. So, but the, the point being is that if you don't follow it verbatim, then you can't question the results you're getting. And obviously you've already got some level of engagement and people through it, but don't think that that will 
then mean that you don't have to listen to what they say because they've obviously tested and measured it with a lot of people at this point. And it seems to get amazing results. Obviously, again, it's very much, you know, only you can see the sort of the top percentages, but... Mm-hmm. From- the challenge with this, though, is you haven't... No one's seen it after three years yet, have they? No, that's true. It's very new. You know, and everyone loves the new rather than the successful. That is true. Is that you speaking about school, James? Well, it, it, just in any business model, I mean, look, I, I hope it does all work out, but, you know, I, I think uh, w- human beings are wired up to new, you know, there's a, you know, a new car, everyone, you yeah, know. Sure. That's why I'm on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, they... They they want they want new you know and 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 they sometimes forget the successful things that you know new fashion a new restaurant opens up and they don't go to the successful restaurant that they've always been to that they know they like they want to try the new one uh, and that's why I always sort of a, you know an air of caution that you know has it been going for a number of years to see if it actually works I think it will work by mm. the way but I just you know I think it's our yeah. job to to add that air of. Mm-hmm. Caution! If this was my business, I was I was eagerly listening as JB was going through some of his stuff. I think I would focus very heavily on making content. Yeah. If I, I mean, that is, it's either you pay for ads and you get people that are not loyal to you, and you have them that are very fickle. You know, Alex Hormozy, the person that we're talking about, has a very loyal audience on the back of content. Yes. Period. Yeah. Yes, I know he's probably spent many, many hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars on meta ads uh, and and YouTube ads and all of that stuff. But we talk about him because of great quality content that he has been putting out for a number of years, years and years and years, that have compounded into a personal brand that is allowing him to set up this school thing and this venture capital fund and have immediate results on the back of just, I'm doing this. Would you be interested? I've consumed hours and hours of your content. I trust you. Here's some money. Um, and that's what you need to do in this place. Yeah, you know, we're talking about this Wim Hof guy who I don't know about, but JB does, and you obviously do. He's got a personal brand, probably built off on the back of impressive content. Maybe he's wrote some books. Uh, I don't know what he's done. Yeah, books, a lot of podcasts. Yeah. So you need to be doing that so that you attract people to you from making content. And let me be absolutely clear to listeners and to yourself. It is an incredible amount of work to make content and have results from it. But, 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 the results, once you've put in the work, are quite frankly outstanding. Um, On your point about companies, companies, their job, they say that they want their staff to be happy. And yes, they want their staff to be happy, but why do they want their staff to be happy? So they can be more profitable. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, companies want to save money, make money, be profitable, or increase the value of the business. There are some unicorns that really care about their staff and what all businesses care about their staff based on the, the basis of profitability. Because if they've got no profits, they can't have any staff. That is the, mm. the cold, hard fact about it. So selling to companies, breath work, meditation, I think is difficult. So this original conversation that sell them what they want, but give them what they need, should be a big part of your philosophy in building this business. So I was thinking, what does a company want from their staff? Well, they want their staff to be more effective, efficient, and profitable. So Maybe you sell services to come and say, look, look, for £25 a month or whatever it is, we will make your staff more organised. Uh, we'll be able to get them to manage people more effectively. We'll be able to... Um, can, can I just throw in, James, too, yeah. off the back of a previous... You, you talked about this before, and I changed it from the mindfulness stuff to focus, concentration, uh, presence uh, in terms of staff. Because people care about focused and, as you say, the absolutely. The but when you when you go and see a company, like say you came and saw, you know, Google, and said, like you know, if we could treble the profitability of your staff and your workforce for such a pitiful and low amount, um, would you be interested in the conversation? That that's the headline. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So you know, like. No one, you know, lose weight by running 5K five times a week. 
oh my god that sounds so horrific i'm not interested in that headline but lose weight by just taking this magic pill called Obzempic or whatever it's called mm. what is it that that thing? Zempic, yeah, yeah that you know that that's a much easier headline yeah. it's a much easier thing to sell and i actually have a problem i think that's going to be really there's i just can't believe that that this is not going to have some negative effects on people, but they've run out of it in this country. Right, Do you yeah. know about that? It's yeah. new, I don't know what it's like in Ireland, uh, Sean, but in this country, people cannot get it from the NHS or their pharmacy. Yeah, my, my, my wife's a GP on the NHS, and she they can't get it for their actual diabetic patients. Who yeah. So what are people doing? I'll tell you what they're doing. They go and buying dodgy versions of it on yeah. the internet, and they've got people going to hospital now like in because they're not actually taking prescribed medication it's some nasty bit of work <laughs> that's gone yeah this is it and then and the people are in really big trouble because they're not taking the proper medication but that is the length that human beings will go to cut corners uh, and i think you know i was watching um do you know who rory sutherland is uh i do sean he's a marketing guy and he's, he, you know, a lot of what he says is theory, and and he says it so well. His theory, you're all bought into it, uh, and it, I think it's actually when you're realistic about it. But there are about fifty percent of what he says. I think, yeah, that is fantastic. Mm. That is a, and he actually caveats his theory sometimes. He goes, I don't know if this will work, but it's such a good story. <laughs> you, you know, you buy into yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, one of the things that uh, he did say, someone interviewed him, said that if someone wanted to get into marketing. Uh, what would be a good thing to do? And he said, study psychology. And I thought that is exactly marketing. Because mm. if you understand how human beings work, and that Zempec thing, Imajiggy thing that was talking about, people can't get it. So they are doing stuff that they probably never usually would do to get the shortcut, yeah. which is take unprescribed medication, which what I've just said there is stupidity on every level. Isn't it? Yeah. There's no two ways about yeah. it. But sensible people that have got money have gone and asked by off the internet off of some dodgy site just to, to get that short-term fix. But that, So now we understand the psychology of human beings. And remember, companies are run by human beings that are profit-hungry. Let's just tell us how it is. So you've got to have a pitch, an elevator pitch to these companies that can sign the checks that are going to give them their dopamine hit of results. How are you going to increase their profitability? And usually the people that sign the checks, other than for maybe local governments, are not woo-woo. They're cold and they're hard decision makers. Yeah. And so you need to spin it in a way, because mm -hmm. you, I know, I know the people that go for walks, that exercise, yeah. that write, that think with clarity are better, more profitable people. You know, they are the best entrepreneurs. They're the best leaders. I know that. And I think we never tire of telling people on the podcast, people in middle management, middle decision makers are usually the people you're going to see, probably. Um, I think I have more egos sometimes and more mm. opinions than people that actually get stuff done. There's a great methodology by a guy called Dean Graziosi, and he's got he's got a methodology called the Seven Layers of Why. And I think this would be a really good. Oh, tell us, JB, what's the seven so, layers? So of basically, why? You you're have just to, going to remember them all, all yeah, seven, are you? You don't get to the well. The, the point of it is that it fits. You, no, no, I for, want to know. Them. For example, here you don't know saying, them, do you? Just spouting it off. You have no idea. No, no, no. Do you? So you basically <laughs> you ask yourself why seven times. Okay. So in this in regard here, so the copy that is written on the Five 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 Club website, so. Um, Give your team a jolt of energy, focus, and gratitude. Why? Oh, because then they'll uh, be yes. then they'll they'll feel better. Why? Because they're actually considering what's good about life. Right, why yeah. does that matter? So you go why 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 seven times, and that actually gets to the crux of the point. Because at the moment you're talking to the top level, and I guess seven layers deeper is probably talking to the psychology of why it actually matters. Because they'll make more profit. Why does that matter? Because then they have a job. Why does that matter? Because then they can feed their family. Like no, you're not going to mm, potentially sell mm, mm, breath work mm. with like, if you don't breathe properly, we're going to take away your family, but mm. you've kind of got to pull on the emotional heartstrings mm, to actually mm, make mm. them realize why is that thing important? 
So that is the seven layers of wine. Maybe Butcher, you, Dean you Grazioli. Just like will... that question of so what as well, like put after it, so what? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, shit. Okay. Allowing clarity of thought, reduction in stress. Why does stress matter? Because then they, they work better. Why does it matter if they work better? Because then they're more profitable. Why does it matter if they're more profitable? Because then you're actually making some money. See, the, the thing is, there's two things that are coming into my mind. Like, first of all, so how long have you been at this, Sean? Two and a half years. Yeah, for two and a half years work and you're only bringing in a couple of grand a month. That's not good enough. You're not living off of that, are you, mate? Um, yeah, living, not living off. No. It's just not enough. And that's because uh, there, there isn't a hungry audience for it. Mm. Because they think, yeah, it's a nice to have. It's not a must have. That's, that is the absolute fact of it. And so you need to reframe it in such a way that they think this is a must have and we must do this. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Now, the, the, unless you make loads of content, as that's the other hack to this. You make loads of content that people discover you and they really believe in it. You know, but I'm talking like content every day, newsletters every day, mm. podcasts, you know, every podcast that you can go on, but also your own podcast, um, you know, YouTube videos. I mean, YouTube, you know, the amount of people, that, I mean, we just had someone from Australia, you know, that, that found us on a rabbit hole in YouTube, you know, so YouTube will find the audience once you've put out a lot of videos, if you're making good videos, they will find you an audience. You know, they have an algorithm so powerful, so powerful that they're just made to do that. And they want to do that to keep people on the platform as long as your content is good. Um, and then the other thing, you know, this whole thing I said, uh, sell them what they want, give them what they need. I, I think about um, a mindfulness, mental healthy coach person that I said to him years and years ago, I said, just become a business coach because they will justify that spend much easier. Then you become their mental health coach. And it's exactly what he's done. And things yeah. are going better. Things are going better because they can go to their wife, they can go to their accountant, they can go to their bank manager and say, I've got a business coach that's going to make my business more profitable. That's a very sensible decision. I've got a breathwork coach I just don't want to hear that. Mm. Do, do, does that make sense, Sean? It, it makes sense to the tune that I had someone reach out about two months ago, and I now have three one-on-one -on -one clients under the guise of coaching, and it's all these tools that's helping them yeah. in their life, but it's one-to-one. -one. But you see, the, the whole thing is about the headline, and any, whatever I've learned in business, you know, that we, I know this is something so different, but we, uh, at my one of my farm attractions, we had this thing called the Summer Spectacular, and that was over the summer holidays. It's a woolly, naff headline. And then we came out with Bubble and Bop, the children's festival. It's the same thing, but the amount of people that come to it has doubled mm. because of the strength of the headline yeah. and the marketplace going, oh, I want a bit of that. Yeah. I want the Bubble and Bop children's festival of a Summer Spectacular. And it, it was the tiny tweak of the headline that made a lot more people buy. And that's what I'm trying to get at, Sean. Does, am I making mm -hmm. sense? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, Crystal. Because at the end of the day, you, you don't want to be running this for two grand a month. You want to be making 200 grand a month, don't you? Correct. And do, do you know the thing is as well, this is the, you know, I, I think I'm just going to say how it is. I actually think you've got a good story since we've been talking on the podcast. I think you do know how many beans make five. Um, you obviously understand. You're curious. You've gone to the, you know, seek out this podcast, other podcasts. You've learned some stuff. You're doing the work, but you're not getting rewarded for the work because I think the marketplace doesn't want to buy what you're selling. And if they did, you'd have a lot more money. Because I don't think you got your headline right. I think it's as simple as that. I think there's also a bit of a misnomer that the all so many businesses just see corporate as this blanket generic term that have just people sat at the top of their ivory towers who just want to chuck cash out of a window. I'll go after corporate. What are you going to do? I'm going to go after corporate. Well, how are you going to get into corporate? Who are you going after? 
and it's and it's often I think you know, and you can see it with with your numbers potentially. There's one business seven at uh, the time that you submitted to come on the show, seventy three individuals, seven paying coaches, and one business. But how hard is it to get the one business through the door? And do they actually want the thing that you've got? You know, I've, I was working with a big funded um, well-being app for corporates and they had to scale, they had to stop their podcast, they had to scale everything right back. They made half the team, three quarters of the team redundant because they just could not get the buy-in to the corporates. And these were going after like, they already had the big banks. The oh, big that was that big thing everyone was talking about, wasn't it? What was it called? Organisations. What was the thing called? What's that? The company? Yeah. Um, uh, I'm not sure if it's the one that you're talking about, so I will I will decide not to give their yeah. name out and shout because still, was, they are still going. Yeah, but they, yeah it was but, a big thing. Uh, everyone was talking about it a few months ago, and uh, you were talking about it yeah. at one point. I mean, let's not say who they are, but it's probably them. Yes, and I was thinking this ain't gonna work, but yeah. I think let's because I, I knew someone that invested into it that had been on my podcast. Uh, okay. Did do you is it, did they get investors involved? They had big American VC money. Mm. They didn't. They didn't like crowd fund it. They had big institutional money. I think it's probably a separate yeah maybe app that we were talking about. But again, they they had gone after and they had you know a Vitality membership. You could go to Holland and Barrett and get a discount. You could go and um, you know get gym membership off. You get equipment. You could have a flipping stand-up desk in your office if you wanted one you could go out for a mental health walk and, up and all this. this sort of stuff but they just couldn't make it couldn't make it work so in terms of your outreach because that's one of the things you're spending time doing outbound to organizations what what does that process look like and how are you potentially with the advice that jimbo's given you in terms of the headline uh, and the sort of the reframing of giving them what they send them what they want and then giving well, them what I think they we need. can uh, jb uh, i mean i'm not going to just step in here for you but you're not doing the right stuff because otherwise people would be giving him money. I want to find out what the stuff is, though. Well, is let's okay? find out what the stuff is. What's yeah. the stuff that you're doing? Yeah. Well. Sean? So the outbound is between LinkedIn and then Snail Mail. See, he's doing lumpy With mail. The, you like that one? Yeah, the, 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 the staple tea bag was next straight from James, which, again, goes down great. Yeah. Gets me in the door and it's like, look, we're, we're actually all pretty good at the minute. Thanks very much. Because you're not selling them what they want. They get you yes, in the door. Correct. That's that's. I just have a. Big, they want uh, to make more money. I'm just. I just a, have yeah. a big across the page. The whole thing is about the headline here. Yeah. Yeah. You just got to say, I'm going to make your teams more profitable. And the other thing as well, don't forget free over discounting. Look, just let me have your team. If it's a big organization, they got 500 staff, 200 staff. So look, just let your team try it free for a month, and let's just see how much they love it. And if they like it, then it, then you start paying. That, that is a trick that James Sinclair does all the time. One of the biggest holiday park chains in the country. I said to them, you should buy our teddy bears. And, oh, will it work? I said, let me, let me just send you five grand's worth of stock for free. You don't have to pay for it. Just try it. They spend well in excess of a million pounds with me now. People can't, like, that's such an irresistible offer. Mm. Oh, he's going to give me five grand's worth of stuff. If it works, I'm going to turn that into 25 grand because that's what they would have done. If it doesn't work... I'm sending it back. No, I said you At his keep cost. it. No, 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 no. Oh, keep it. I just said, you keep it. You don't have to send it back. Let's just see if it works. Let's just try it. I'm going to remove all the risk from you. Right, right. And for you, Sean, you don't even have any cost of stock. So you'd go into, I don't know, Grant Thornton, the accountants, and say, oh, you've got quite a lot of accountants here. You know, they're working on big deals. They're doing big numbery things. I'm going to see if I can make them more profitable for you. Let me just try it. you got got 500 people in your office all of them free for a month and let's just see if we can get them on this because mm. you've got to get the team to buy in if only mm -hmm. 30 of them stay on and say it's great i think that still be enough for them saying okay yeah what what that's 10 pound per client or you can just say look you can have as many of them as you like it's two thousand pound a month on a 12 month contract boom all of a sudden sean's now earning double the income and I think if you got in the car and went around and saw 100 companies and you say, look, my methodology makes your teams more profitable because they start thinking better. And you don't have to take my word for it. Let me try it for free. Because I think you know, like I know, like JB knows, if people start doing this stuff, they become better, don't they? Yeah, 100%. In terms of the, yeah. the, the tactical bit of the outreach, how are you doing that, Sean? Are you, are you just DMing people on LinkedIn? Uh, sending anything on LinkedIn will be a video. And, and generally, it's along the lines of uh, 
JB, cheers to the collection. Sean here. Listen, this might not be for you. Tell me to piss off if it's not, but will it be worth a conversation on XYZ? Um, and that's tends to use more you know what, individual Sean? signups. Sean, like, mate, you need to make some content. Yeah. Because if you've got content and then you say, look, have you thought about this? And it's maybe you doing a TED talk talking about how this will make people better, better humans to handle life, to become more profitable. This is this is the secret sauce that make teams super profitable. What a great video that will be. And business owners will be watching that and thinking, I don't know, I could try this for free with my team. Because it's not going to cost you anything. And what the best, the worst thing that can be happen is you've made a connection. The best thing is you get a load of people giving you money from next month. Yeah. You've got, you've got to tighten up all of your marketing stuff as well. Like on your LinkedIn, for example, if that's how you're outreaching, you, the company pages aren't even linked. And then the top one that you've yeah, got in sure. your experiences bounces out to somebody else's website. So you've got to really, really na- like get perfect what you've already got and then start people then, don't want to be sold to but they love buying that's, that's yeah, yeah you true. know true 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 if you send me a dm message and i get so many every day trying to sell me something mm. you go to the delete pile if you sent me james if you set this content out about how to make your teams more profitable what do you think of it i mean the intrigue is there yeah, I'm watching yeah, that. Yeah. And then if i've watched 20 minutes of you on youtube or listened to an interview with you i'm like no like and trust has been built the whole yeah. time tick, 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 I, I want to see if I can spend some money and get this in my game because I've discovered mm-hmm. it then sort of well you've discovered it for me but I'm forming my own opinion does, does that make sense again this is why marketing is understanding human psychology first it, it, it really does um, and I've been resisting long form content and that's where I need to go <laughs> but I, I would be I would be doing keynotes. Don't charge you know, don't mm. charge me. Just go and do loads of keynotes. It'll get you good. Tell your cancer story. This is why we've done this stuff. It's a great story. Um it made me pause and reflect listening to you when you told it a few moments ago. That's a great hook to bring in and how you overcome and and now why you're a better person and you get more done and you're more efficient. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And the best part is none of that's made up. Nope. Go do, Sunshine. Go do. I can't wait to see your content. Once you've done some good content, you send it to me. And if I like it and I think it's good enough, I will share it on my stuff. How about that, baby? Cheers, gentlemen. I really appreciate that. Thank you, James. You could get him, You could do some breath work. No, I want to see him do some good stuff. Yeah, I know. But then you should. Then he could come over. One step at a time. He could come over. One and step could, at a time. He could try and fix you. God knows you need it. Uh, where you. can where can people uh, go and find out more information about what you're doing, Sean? Because it sounds very very interesting. Where can they go if they've if you've tweaked their interest in this pod? Uh, yeah, so LinkedIn.com forward slash the five 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 club um, or the five 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 club uk. The form at the bottom will get you straight to my email. Awesome stuff. Thank you very much for being on the pod, mate. All the best. Take care, Bye, Sean. Take care, you're fellas. amazing. Cheers, pal. Bye, mate. There you go, Bye-bye. Sean, all the way from Ireland. So let's quickly up, rate mate. him because it's lunchtime. <laughs> it's lunchtime, right. Oh, hang on, I haven't got my jingle ready. There you go. We're doing the eight traits of the great entrepreneurs, and today we rate Sean from Ireland, who I think lives in England. Oh, does he? Because he said his wife works for the NHS, unless it's a long distance relationship. <laughs> That's the dream, isn't it? Um, right, um, go on then. Give us your eight traits of your greats. Uh, starting with the end in mind. No. No, passionate about their cause. Yes. Definitely. Yes. Uh, untold amounts of resilience. He can have a one for that. 100%. I, absolutely. They're master relationships people. I think he gets that. Commercial awareness. No, we're not having that at the moment. They innovate so they don't evaporate. No. No. Master marketeer. No. But he understands it. It's so frustrating, isn't it? That he's, he's understanding our stuff. Why is he not making content? That drives me insane. Mm. He's making videos and turning up to calls every day, but no content. Yeah. You have to record the call. Just annoys me. They stay teachable and curious. Yes, he is that. Come in, give him a score. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. I think it's four and a half. Four and a half. Well done, Sean. He scores himself four and a half points, but let's see what happens when he starts to implement some of the strategies and tactics. Mm. They're prescribed by Dr. Jim. Well, I think the end of that conversation went better than I thought it was going to go because I think actually he could do some stuff. Mm. 
But it's not doing all the wrong stuff like most people. I it's the sort of thing on on that you school platform. Not building a business by sending bloody LinkedIn direct messages. No, you've got to pick up that trombone. Yeah, you've got to get in that car. You've got to speak on those stages. You've got to write the book. He's got to write a book. It sounds like you're going to go into a song then. There we go again. Well, thank you very much for watching, listening. That's probably one of the best coaching ones that we've done, though, because you hate coachy-based businesses, don't you, ordinarily? No, you don't hate the business, but you hate it's them It's very hard to sell, isn't it? So you've just yeah. got to make sure you're bringing enough income to build wealth around you into other assets, property, index funds. And in a previous business, um, previous podcast, we talked about like brand you love. Don't get hung up on the brand in this sort of environment that you have got to get hung up on the brand. Yeah, because you like are. Like a headspace or a calm. Like, yeah, that's, mm. that's the only sellable asset is the brand and the brand value and the database, I guess, ultimately. Mm. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this podcast episode, please feel free to let us know. Leave us a five-star review wherever you download your podcast. Leave a comment if you were watching on YouTube. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think that Sean should be doing. And maybe you are a coach, a mentor, an advisor, a consultant. Maybe you've got a big database of people you're like, Sean, I need your breath, white man. Then you can go and find out more information. Let us know on YouTube what was your favourite part of the pod. And also, don't forget, the main thing, the most important thing, guys, is that Chamber is still single. Do <laughs> let us... I haven't been single for a long time. can't imagine those days. Yeah. Oh, they were good times. Um, we have... You've thrown me off completely now. Don't forget, we're still looking for feedback on fact or quote of the week. Yeah. Rate it out of 10. How much you enjoy... Just put the number 10 if you love it. Rate it between zero because you hate it and 10 because you love it. I think they like it when it's a business fact. Yeah, this is what I hate about you. And yeah. I know hate's a strong word, but I'm going to use it. You invent a crap game and then you change the rules during the middle of it. Um, it's right, a business say goodbye, podcast. Say Thanks goodbye, for watching. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks for watching today, gang. I hope you enjoyed the show. Now, look, we're looking for some great businesses to come on the podcast. If you've got challenges, but you're desperate to grow your business and you can't necessarily work out how to do it on your own, you'll be a perfect candidate to come here on the podcast. It's absolutely free to come on the show. Go to my website, jamesinclair.net, and there's a podcast button. Click on the podcast button, fill in the application form, and we'll do our very best to get you on the show and try and grow your business. If you're loving the podcast, make sure you subscribe to the channel by clicking here. And why not give this one a watch? I think you'll like it.